Welcome to Random Movie Reviews. I'm Nathan, and today I'll be talking about one of the greatest action movies ever made, aka Mad Max Fury Road. Since today's the day that Furiosa of Mad Max Saga, the official prequel to Mad Max Fury Road, is out today, what better time to revisit Mad Max Fury Road than right now? A film that I often consider to be arguably the greatest action movie of the modern era, easily the greatest action movie of the 2010s. Mission Impossible Fallout is a very close second, and then the John Wick movies are right up there as well, but Fury Road for me takes the cake. It's not only a very special action movie, but it's just a very special movie period. Mad Max Fury Road is a 2015 film directed by George Miller and starring Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron. The film is centered around Max Rakotansky, aka Mad Max, a wanderer of the post-apocalyptic wasteland. As Max gets captured by a gang of war boys, a group of soldiers under the command of wasteland dictator Immortan Joe, Imperator Furiosa, one of Immortan Joe's lieutenants, hatches a plan to rescue the wives of the monstrous warlord in an attempt to reach the Green Place. There are so many things that I find utterly amazing about this movie and probably the number one thing at the top of that list is that this film is essentially a two hour chase scene that tells a story and from the second this movie starts it's like you're being shot out of a cannon. This movie once it starts it is not slowed down but yet the movie still finds moments to develop our characters and develop characters that we actually care about in a world that we want to see them succeed in because it's so desolate, it's so desperate, it's so hopeless that one of the most powerful aspects about this movie is about trying to find hope in that hopelessness. This is essentially kind of an optimistic post-apocalyptic movie, which sounds like it's something like on paper it sounds like something that shouldn't work at all but not only does it work brilliantly i mean it works so well that like i said at the very beginning of this review this movie is just a very unique and special kind of film that feels like a lightning in a bottle visually the movie is one of the most uh, beautiful films uh, of the digital era the use of color in this movie in particular is just outstanding when we see uh, bright beautiful oranges in, in the desert when you're looking at just the sand or like the scene where they go right into the sandstorm you see these dark colors of red and these lightning strikes and then the scene at night which is a day for night scene stark blue that is just gorgeous to look at i mean visually this movie is unbelievably compelling but the movie isn't just about the visuals like i said it's about the story it's about the characters and admittedly the story of mad max free road is very simple it's extremely straightforward basically it's uh, a about this small group of people that are looking to uh basically restart civilization in in an area that imperator furiosa labels the green place i don't want to get into spoilers for people who haven't seen it but basically, they have to devise a plan, ultimately, to uh, overthrow the Wasteland Dictator Immortan Joe. It's simple, but it's incredibly effective. And the themes that the movie explores, the two main ones, is hope and redemption. At least that way, you know, we might be able to... together... come across some kind of redemption. Probably two of my favorite themes to explore in any movie. I just think it's important to remember that uh, even in our darkest moments, we are we still can find the strength to overcome. And that's what this movie highlights so beautifully. And it makes the action have that much more weight. On its own, the action is incredible. It's 90% practical. It should be noted that although the movie does have CGI effects, the CGI effects are used to enhance the practical effects. Uh, it doesn't solely rely on just CGI alone. And I think that's one of the reasons why this movie has aged amazingly well and will continue to age amazingly well. We basically put him on a decelerator system so that we actually pulled him up literally within inches from the top of the vehicle. Yeah! 
the action packs a punch not only because it's incredibly directed by George Miller and edited amazingly well and the and the uh, the color the the color of the scenes I mean it all coalesces into this just a moving painting essentially but the action hits as hard as it does is because you actually care about what's happening it's not mindless in any way the action in this movie tells a story and it serves a purpose for these characters it gives them obstacles for them to overcome and because you care about the story you care about the characters the action just packs way more of a punch than your average action movie does what i find somewhat curious about the reception of mad max fury road is that critically the movie did very well it was nominated and won numerous oscars for its uh, technical achievements uh, but I still come across uh, Mad Max fans, fans of the original Mel Gibson trilogy, who openly dislike Fury Road. Now, obviously, everybody's entitled to their opinions. I'm not here to say that anyone's wrong, but I, let's just say that I've had personal experience talking to Mel Gibson Mad Max fans, telling me how much they hate Fury Road. I asked them why, and they're kind of just, I just don't like it. I don't really get, like, an explanation as to why. And the reason I'm so kind of confused by this is because to me Mad Max Fury Road is essentially Road Warrior 2.0 basically what I'm saying is that everything that's awesome in Road Warrior from the action to the fun and unique characters to the the world design to the to the villains themselves in my opinion Fury Road does all of those things and more it it there's there's I mean I love Road Warrior. It's my second favorite of the Mad Max movies overall. But Fury Road, it, it tops it considerably because, like I said, it just takes everything that's great about Road Warrior and makes it even better. Better visuals, better action, better additional characters, a better villain. I love Lord Humongous. That guy's iconic. But, dude, Immortan Joe is so sinister and gnarly looking and badass. I'm sorry. I just think he's... I just think... Fury Road does everything a little bit better. Plus, you get Furiosa, who, in my opinion, is probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, modern female action hero. There's been a pretty controversial debate going on for quite some time about how female action heroes are presented in movies. And um, examples of, of people criticizing depictions of female action heroes are like, the Marvel Universe, for example, She-Hulk and Captain Marvel are the two that immediately come to my head. I've never seen She-Hulk, but I have seen Captain Marvel. And my problem with that character personally, outside of the fact that she's just kind of particularly smug and not that charismatic or likable, is that in order for her to look more powerful, they just surround her character with weak men and they give captain marvel excuses to emasculate those men make them look stupid so that she can look stronger to me that's a very weak and cheap way of making a female character look heroic you take the best examples of the greatest female uh action heroes of all time like the one behind me for example uh ripley from aliens sarah connor from the terminator series trinity those are just three that popped into my head they're all amazing characters and they're all strong but the movies don't feel the need to constantly remind you that they're women and the movies don't feel the need to surround those characters with weak men in order for you to recognize that those characters are strong all those characters i just named have strong male characters that they work with for furiosa it's mad max for ripley it's um hicks and, and bishop in aliens or, or uh, Dallas in, in the first Alien movie. For Trinity, it's obviously Neo and Morpheus. And like, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the movie doesn't feel the need to constantly remind you, oh, this is a woman in a man's world. It's like, we know that they're women. Can they be more than just their gender? Can they just be strong, well-written characters outside of that and they happen to be women? I don't think it's that particularly hard to write a compelling female character. Um, but the way that a lot of modern movies have gone about it, doesn't really work or connect with me. I don't, I don't have a connection to Captain Marvel or She-Hulk. I don't have a connection to Rey from Star Wars. Nothing against these actors personally. 
Uh, they've all done great work. I've seen numerous movies where they act in, and they're all they have uh, great talent. But the char- the way their characters are written doesn't really do them justice. Furiosa is a great counterpoint to the Captain Marvels, to the She Hulks, to whatever uh, modern female hero that you think is just not all that compelling or well written. That's why I was really, and still am, very excited about this Furiosa prequel. Based on what I've uh, heard about it, uh, the film is already getting rave reviews from critics that I trust and and people that I follow on Letterboxd. By the way, if you want to read my Letterboxd, it's Nate the Film Nerd, all one word, uh, if you're curious about my reviews. But the consensus seems to be that uh, it is a very worthy prequel in addition to the Mad Max series as a whole and Fury Road in particular. I personally can't wait to see it. Even if I do really like the movie, I just don't see it topping Fury Road. And that's because I don't see most movies topping Fury Road. I would compare Fury Road to movies like Terminator 2 and The Matrix or even Aliens for that example. And that these movies are so good. They are so special that I just don't see how you could recreate them. You might be able to get close with other movies. There are movies that might be able to get right next to it. But being as good or even topping those movies, I just don't see it happening. Fury Road, as you're watching it, it feels like lightning in a bottle. It feels like this movie could have only been made by these people at this specific time period. And everything i mean the the making of the movie was rough i mean they were filming in harsh desert conditions famously tom hardy and charlie theron did not get along with one another did you witness any beef uh between charlie's and tom hardy on the set of mad max huh yeah <laughs> the conditions were rough and brutal and uncomfortable and i personally feel some of that uncomfortableness lended to how magical this movie ended up feeling. Kind of like of Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now is one of those movies where every time I watch it, I was like, how is does this movie even exist in our world? It feels otherworldly. That's how Fury Road feels to me. Obviously, as you can tell, I love this movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, action film, action genre regardless. It is just a movie that every time I revisit it, I am left in awe. I love it a little bit more. And like I said, it's an optimistic movie about being in a hopeless world. It's a movie that actually fills me up with hope. And it's a post-apocalyptic action movie. I mean, that's a very rare thing. And to me, that warrants it being one of the best modern films ever made. Uh, So please tell me what you guys think about this movie uh, in the comments. If you've seen Furiosa, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Whenever I do see the movie, hopefully in theaters, but if I have to wait for it to come out, so be it. uh, I will be sure to review it because I love this character. I love these series of movies with the exception of maybe the first one, which is a little too slow for me, in my opinion, and Beyond Thunderdome, which the second half of that movie (laughs) sucks. First half's pretty good. But as far as the rest of the movies go, I love these movies. Uh, I love talking about them. So expect more reviews. I should go back and do a Road Warrior review. I mean, like I said, that's my second favorite. But Fury Road is just right there. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe.